Hello and welcome to another episode in the barn with the smart car. This is about the Smart City Coupe 2000, which was my father-in-law's. It was left on a driveway in Manchester for years out in the cold and rain and was left to um, uh, degrade. So we got there and uh, the first thing we did was gave it a good clean on the driveway as best we could with the materials that we could. And then it was decided that because this thing wouldn't crank and wouldn't start, we we're going to get it to the barn. So I have to do a video of this. This is a 2000 left-hand drive smart car, what they call a City Coupe 450 before it became the 42, commonly known as the 42. So this is my father-in-law's car. He sent it to me with a electrics work mm. partially. There's some kind of short and the garage didn't install the kill switch. Uh, wouldn't crank, uh, wouldn't start, but some electrics work. So just to demonstrate that, <laughs> well, it's a bit late now because I've pulled things out of it. I wonder what's going to happen now. So turn that. Probably not very much. <clears throat> okay, so there's lights that come on here. So there's still something weird going on, and it's all flashing now because I've pulled something out of it. But basically, didn't go into gear. You get that single line and it all flashes and doesn't start. Anyway, it wasn't that bad before. And I lifted up this carpet because the car smelt and it was damp. And I noticed the rails on the seats had rusted. So I lifted it up and there's a control box here with more fuses in it. It sits right there and it was sitting in a little bit of water. There. And I pulled it out and looked online and it controls everything. So engine's there. These are the seat rails. As you can see, this is the driver's side, quite corroded. So I need to give that a bit of a whiz bang with a wire brush and paint it up. See if I can salvage that. Looks pretty good, still pretty strong. Passenger side wasn't as corroded, but still was corroded ever so slightly. So obviously some moisture got inside the car. So, I pulled it all to bits, it didn't take long. There's only four bolts putting the seats, holding the seats in. And the carpet is still drying out. It does start to smell a lot better and it's, it's drier now. So a few more days of that and it will be decent. But something I didn't mention before, but these things notoriously leak at these windows. So this window has just got a single um, plastic clip on the inside, which you kind of pop off and then the window pulls off from the outside there's a clip that goes there which I broke of course and so I pop the windows out they're there and I'm going to seal them up with some Captain Tolly's sealant stuff which is what they use on boats to seal leaks I don't think it's coming from the roof I could be wrong it could be coming from anywhere here but I'll have a good look at it um, when I can to see if there is somewhere that it is leaking from but this thing's basically been left outside for years it's never been garaged and eventually it's leaked and it's survived some pretty tough winter this winter with frozen minus 10 and continuous rain so the car needs a little bit of love i'm hoping i can find the leak and solve it but it's very it's gonna be very difficult but we'll get it immersed in water and see where it's leaking from let's see if we can get it going quick video to show you the update of the window seal so i cleaned all around them and i've got i was going to put this on it but it, it fixes really small cracks and you kind of build it up so i've just gone for adhesive to try and glue the, the original rubber or neoprene kind of seal back down so wherever it was coming away i've kind of got in there with this rubber seal and stuck it down and i know it's flexible and fibrous so this one was the good side i also looked at this Found some of this. I think it's like some neoprene type, sealy, double sided, sticky tapey stuff. I was going to stick that in, but I thought if you go too thick around here, it's going to be hard to put it back on that. It's going to be hard to compress it because the clip comes in from the inside and kind of pulls it tight. So I, th I thought it'd be best just to keep the maintain the seal and just integrate that. This was the bad side. 
especially this lower end was all kind of come away and so I've glued that all down and given it loads of this adhesive stuff to glue the old seal back in. I'm a bit worried about this bit because you need that contact with the with the glass to make the seal. So it's, it's kind of fingers crossed. Let's see if that works. I've gone a bit overboard on this side because it was coming away from most edges. For my YouTube channel, so I took the windows off. I've cleaned all the black stuff. That was the previous seal residue all around them. Got that all off both sides. I'm now in the process of, I hoovered them up. As you can see, things like that need a good scrub. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the offending article. Maybe that's where it got in. So I'm checking both sides. So I've hoovered all the way around them. I'm just giving them a scrub with a little brush. Then I have the solution of the thing with the thing with the thing. Where's it gone? Yaggedy yaggedy yag. Okay, I can't find it. Captain Tolly's window ceiling, blah, blah, blah. A boat door window crack thing. So yeah, that's around somewhere. So I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a little play with this, have a good inspection all the way around the seals to see which one's where it's leaking from, where getting really good clean, clean it all up so I know exactly what I'm looking at and then refit. I've found new clips from a Halford's clip thing to go in goes in there like that replacement clip from the Halfords generic clip thing and I also found something to go at the female end fnall fnall where is it oh come on and some little... anyway they look like this the little BMW um, um, side skirt clips I've just crimped them a little bit here they go I crimp them a little bit. They would normally be in there. I hope they fit. Let's have a look. So you get your clip to clip and you put it. It would go in there. Oh, it doesn't fit. Oh, there it is. It'll go in there. I'll bang that in and I'll make sure it receives the, the male end. Oh, there's the, there's the Captain uh, Tolly's finding fixes leaks thing so i'll probably just do a bead all the way around and see what happens another weird thing on this car and it's why they've done a kill switch is this indicators no longer work it has, it has well, the indicators work Hazards don't work. I'm not sure if that's bust. If you press it, the hazards don't come on. And they don't they say they don't flash. And that does something weird. But nothing happens. These don't do anything. Just always on. something I suppose. Oh well, it's gone off now. Weird. It's possessed. No signs of corrosion in there. That's clean. Don't get it. Weird. And that just makes that hum. These are all buzzing away. There's something Vaguely doing something in there, I'm not sure if it's a clutch actuator. So the plot thickens, I've plugged this all back in, moved the relays around. I don't I think one of the relays isn't working, but then look, I didn't get this before. When it's when I'm turning the key now, I get this. It's doing something. And that was not doing that before. It's like it's trying to crank. It's trying to, I think the starter motor needs a bit of encouragement. It's trying, but it's just been sat still for so long. So I need to figure out how to. Every time I crank it, it sounds a bit louder. It sounds a bit better.
This is under the smart city coop. Uh, as you can see, I have stripped the bolts times one, two, and three. And I've just been applying loads of heat and I'm gonna heat and cool them loads of times now over the next few days to try and loosen them off. I'm gonna give it a little tap and then I'm gonna, I don't know. I'm gonna start off by cutting grooves into them and then trying to put a screwdriver in them to turn them on a on a ratchet. I'm just looking at the starter motor on this thing. This was serviced in Smart Macclesfield and they've said the starter motor has been replaced. That looks corroded and nasty and badness all around and I don't believe that is a new starter motor. Exhaust is brand new. Exhaust is brand new, but they haven't haven't changed the lambda sensor. In fact, it's cut. So I can't get a view of that from here. What I did from the top, and it, I'm going to take the top off this thing and look at the lambda sensor. But the new exhaust looks brand new. It just looks lovely. Yeah, never, never done anything in this life, this exhaust. But it's, uh, yeah, expensive nonsense. I have to do a video of this. this. This interior is so difficult to remove on the smart City Coupe 2000 left-hand drive that we've decided to cut the carpet in two, stick a heater underneath that thing on the driver's side, and I've propped it up with a bit more of a shaft under here. And this has been drying out for over a week and it's still wet. So I've put the heater on there, I'm gonna hot box this car. Car is getting hot boxed, goodbye car. If it catches fire. Well, that's that's a yeah. that's a good end for that car, really. If it catches fire, an honourable, an honourable, an honourable end to the smart car. It caught fire. No, darling, seriously. There's no there's no smart cars of this era left, Charlotte. They're all gone. No, 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 don't. They're all smoked. They're all smoked to the fire. Oh, darling, this one's going to be fixed. Don't worry. Look, 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 look. I need I, I need to hot box it. No, no. I need to hot box it. It means I'm going to make a hot box, and it's going to, all the all the moisture is going to evaporate. Hot box! Well, if anyone wants to know what it looks like on the inside of this sort of cluster, I've taken mine to pieces because uh, the light kept staying on and uh, that orange triangle warning thing wasn't working when you pushed the button and then when you pushed the key button it went bananas. So I just thought I'd take it to bits, have a look inside it, give it all a clean with some uh, Cantad cleaner. It's looking all right. There's a few cobwebs in there. Let's see what it's like when I put it back together. So I gave up trying to remove that bolt. I watched another film on YouTube and that's just the motor. So we know the motor works. So there was this guy, he pulled this thing out and uh, put, sprayed some cleaner in it. And I'm just gonna put some grease in there and then stick it all back together and hope for the best. Huzzah! Home mechanics uh, nightmare. So I took the clutch actuator off the smart city coupe um, stripped all three bolts one was already stripped or was absent and as I proceeded to try and turn the other two and I did use some of that they just twisted off so they were really corroded so I've got a problem there about how do I get those bolts out might apply some heat and just try and twist them off with a um, mole grips and then um, it's different. This is different to everything I've seen before because there's only two bolts here that I can see. One there and one there. So yeah, we're going to have a look at that. Another episode of In the Barn with a Smart Car. So I've got to find the starter motor solenoid. It's, I'm pretty sure it's there. There's a noise. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. And what we're going to do now, Mummy's going to start the car and I'm going to tap the solenoid. Okay, Mummy, see so you turn it. Now? Yeah. And that is how we start the car in the barn. That's amazing. Yay!
Let's take let's change the starter motor. Oh, let's start this up. Key. Unlock. Key. It's in reverse. Foot on brake, neutral. Start the first time. Engage. Oh, for fuck's sake! Okay, so basically I changed the starter motor put the clutch actuator back on and now when I put, try and put it in gear it does this another episode of in the barn with a smart car on the 2000 city coupe 4.2 uh, some of you may recall I had a problem I took the clutch actuator off to service it and in doing that I stripped two bolts so I've spent um, a long time trying to weld the bolts out uh, successful on one failed on two uh, I managed to drill one out and I've now managed to tap and die uh, an M6 um, thread into that space and now I'm trying to get the clutch actuator back in and I want to just share a bit of my misery with you as you come under the car you see the clutch actuator so I've got bolt one and bolt two and I have to get that right over to the right and similarly with that one right over to the right in order for that to engage the clutch properly um, the problem is I've only got two hands I'm not an octopus and I really just cannot do it I'm just trying to think how can I get something like a bungee or some loads of cable ties to pull all this across so that I can engage these bolts there must be a way of doing it. Okay, some people have seen my previous reel about my clutch actuator. So I got a new one. I've installed it. I stuck it in reverse. I've tightened it. This isn't the first turn on, but I just want to show you where I've got with everything. Okay, so okay, if you start from nothing, you have to unlock it first because this thing's got this immobilizer thing, which is hard work. Okay, so it's in neutral. I press my foot on the brake, stick in reverse, it goes in reverse, neutral. You can hear the nice clicks. First, great. Back in neutral. Starts first time, stick in reverse. Hallelujah. Brake. Stick it in first. Oh yeah! Smarty lives to fight another day. That only took four months. So first drive, I'm not on an open road. This is a private road. I'm driving the Smarty Pants. <clears throat> uh, bad bits. Rev counter doesn't work. Good bits. I thought the speed almost doesn't work, but it does, which is really nice. Um, other bad bits, uh, the switch on this only changes to automatic if you pull that out and do that, then it's automatic. So that needs sort of a bit of a hack to make that work. Uh, and this thing doesn't work, this cluster. And I'm not sure if it's just the cluster that's wrong or if it's a case of that there's something wrong with the SAM unit. I really hope it's the former, not the latter, but if I press that, nothing happens. Press that, nothing happens. Nothing happens there, maybe the light goes on a little bit. That light goes on, but doesn't stay on. Maybe that's related to that. Maybe these two things are both corroded, I don't know. I've got to pull a few more things apart, but I'm really pleased the Speedo works. That's grand, grand old news. And then uh, she's really nice to drive, so. You feel, you know you're in a smarty, it's just fun and yay. So overall the the Smart City Coupe 2000 was a good good fun project to learn about car mechanics and smart cars and how to change starter motors and how to do some basic things like mess around with clutch actuators and deal with corrosion and electrical problems. 
And as you can see, after I had it all in pieces and put it back together, she scrubbed up really well, came really clean, uh, managed to get rid of a lot of the moisture under the carpets so it didn't smell as badly. I gave it a lot of ventilation, ran it for a while, drove it, passed its MOT, no problems. Uh, as you saw on a previous uh, clip, I, what I thought was the starter motor was actually the, the the gear change motor, and that was really corroded. And I think that was so corroded it was causing a bad earth. So I did sell this car on to a student who didn't drive it, and the, the, the battery died. I think if you're going to try and restore one of these things, then I wish you luck. Lancaster Bomber.